Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, Rising Tides. And I told you that last chapter was emotional. Well, this one is too. So be prepared. Chapter 18. Anna weighed her priorities and took the day off. She couldn't be sure what time Grace would be by to tend the house, and she couldn't risk missing her. She didn't give a good damn what Ethan said or didn't say. There was a crisis. She believed they'd simply had a spat or a misunderstanding. She would have been sympathetic or amused. Whichever was most called for, it wasn't a misunderstanding that had put misery into Ethan's eyes. Oh, he had a way of hiding it, she mused, as she slowly and ruthlessly tugged out weeds that threatened her begonias in the fore front yard bed, and he hid his more personal feelings very well. It just so happened she was a professional at filtering through to emotion. Too bad for him that she inherited a social worker for her sister-in-law. She poked that set a bit. There was no doubt in her mind. The boy knew something, but she run straight into unwavering male loyalty. All she got out of him was a quen shrug and a zip lip. She could have willed it out nonetheless. She, she could willed it out nonetheless, but she hadn't had the heart to put a chip in that lovely bond set so could keep his loyalty to, to Ethan. Anna would work on Grace. She was positive they hadn't seen each other for days. It was pathetically easy to keep tabs on Ethan. He was out on the water every morning and in the boatyard every afternoon and through the evening. He poked at, poked at his, he poked at his dinner, then retreated to his room where she'd seen the light slanting until his door well. Slanting under his door well into the night or on several occasions. Brooding, she thought, with an impatient shake of her head. And if he wasn't brooding, he was looking for a fight. She had broken up what would certainly have been bloodshed over the weekend when she walked in on the three brothers going nose to nose in the boatyard. Seth looking on with avid interest. Whatever caused it remained a mystery as she bounced straight off that same untied male wall. Shrugs and snarls were all she got for her trouble. Well, it was going to stop. She decided to attack some chicken weed with enthusiasm. Women knew how to share and discuss, and if she had to bang Grace Monroe over the head with her garden spade, Grace was damn well going to share and discuss. It was, the, it was with pleasure that she heard Grace's car pull in, and it tipped back her hat, Rose, and offered a welcoming smile. Hi there. Hello, Anna. I thought you'd be at work. Took a mental health day. Oh, yes, misery here as well. She mused and not quite as well coated as Ethan. You didn't? Didn't bring Aubrey with you? No, my mother wanted her today. Grace ran a hand up and down the strap of the oversized bag over her. Well, I'll get started and let you get back to your gardening. I was just looking for an excuse to take a break. Why don't we sit down on the porch a minute? I really should get the first load of laundry in. Grace? And I laid a gentle hand on her arm. Sit down. Talk to me. I count you as one of my friends. I hope you count me as one of yours. I do. Grace, boy's favorite. Should take three breaths to say, I do, Anna. Then let's sit down. Tell me what's happened to make you and Ethan so unhappy. I don't know if I can, but she was tired, bone tired. So she sat down and said, I guess I made a mess of everything. How? She cried herself dry, Grace thought. Not that it would help. Maybe it would help to talk things over with another woman, or she was beginning to feel close to. I let myself assume, she began. I let myself plan. Pick me flowers. She said with elbows lift of her hands. Pick you flowers. And his eyes narrowed fractionally. Wrapped my butt. She thought. Filled it away for later retribution. And he took me to dinner, candles and wine. I thought he was going to ask me to marry him. Ethan does things stage by stage. And I thought he was leading up to proposing. Oh, of course you did. You're in love with each other. He's devoted to Aubrey. And she adores him. You're both nesters. Why wouldn't you think it's... Grace stayed, stared for a moment and let her alone. I can't tell you what it means to hear you say that, but like such a fool. Well, stop. You're not a fool. I'm not, and I certainly thought it. We were both wrong. He didn't ask me, but he loved me that night, Anna, so tenderly. I never believed anyone could feel so much for me. He had a nightmare later. A nightmare? Yes. She understood it now. It was bad, very bad, but he pretended it wasn't. He told me not to worry and brush it off, so I didn't think any more about it. Then, thoughtfully, she rubbed a faint bruise on her thigh that she'd given herself, bumping into a table of shinies. The next day, I decided if I sat around waiting for Ethan to do the asking, I'd have gray hair on my wedding day. Ethan doesn't exactly rush through life. No, he doesn't. He gets things done in his own time, gets them done well. But he could use... Sure use a poke now and then. He does, doesn't he? 
She couldn't stop the warm wishful smile. Sometimes he just thinks things to death, and I thought this was going to be one of those times, so I made up my mind to do the asking myself. Yeah, that's Ethan to marry you? <laughs> and a chuckle leaned back on a girl, Grace. I had it all worked out, everything I wanted to say and how to say it. I thought on the water where he's most content, so I asked him to take me out for an evening sail. So lovely when the sun's setting and the sail's bright and full of wind. And I asked him, and I slipped a hand over his I gotta return you down, but it was more than that. If you'd seen his face, he went so cold. He said he'd explain things to me when we got back, and he did. I don't fright, feel right sounding, Anna, but it's Ethan's business. But he said he can't marry me, won't marry me, or anyone, ever. Anna didn't speak for a moment. She was Seth's caseworker, which meant she'd had full access to the files on the three men who would stand as his guardian. She knew their past nearly as well as they did. Is it because of what happened to him as a child? Grace's gaze flickered and stared straight at He told you? <laughs> no, but I know about it, most of it. It's part of my job. You know what his mother, that woman, did to him? <laughs> Let other people do it. He was only a little boy. <clears throat> I know that she forced him to have sex with clients for several years before she abandoned him. There are still copies of the medical reports in his file. I know that he was raped and beaten before Stella Quinn found him in the hospital. And I know what that kind of trauma, that kind of constant abuse can do. He can very well have become an abuser himself. It's a miserable, common cycle. But he didn't. No. He became a thoughtful, considerate man with nearly unflappable control. The skulls are there under it. It's likely that his relationship with you has brought some of them closer to the surface. He won't let me help Anna. He's got it in his head that he can't risk having children because he's got her blood in him. Bad blood that he would pass on. He won't marry because marriage means family to him. He's wrong. And he has... The best example of how wrong it, in his own mirror. He not only has her blood, but he spent the first 12 years, the most impersonal years, with her in an environment that could warp any young man. Instead, he's Ethan Quinn. Why should his children, children that come from the two of you, be any less than he is? I wish I had thought to say that. I'm so shocked and sad and shaking. I don't think it would have mattered if I had. He was... He wasn't going to listen, not to me, she said, so he doesn't think I'm strong enough to live with what he's lived with. He's wrong. Yes, he's wrong, but his mind's made up. He won't want me now. He says the choice is mine, but I know him. If I say I can accept this and we can go on as we are, we'll eat at him until he pulls away. <laughs> can you accept it? I've asked myself that. thought about that for days now. I love him enough to want to, maybe to settle for it, at least for a while. But it would eat at me, too. No, I can't accept it. I can't accept only one part of him. And I won't ask Albert to accept anything less than a father. Good for you. Now, what are you going to do about it? I don't know that there's anything I can do. Not when we both need different things. And a little... Grace, you're the only one who can decide. But let me tell you, Kim and I didn't just float to the altar or cause more wings. We wanted different things, or thought we did. And to find out what we wanted together, we hurt each other. We got in each other's faces and we dealt with it. It's hard to get in Ethan's face about anything, but it's not impossible. No, it's not impossible, but he wasn't honest with me, Anna. Underneath it all, I can't forget that. He let me spend my daydreams. All the time, knowing he wasn't going to cut the threads of them. All the time, he was going to cut the threads of them and let me fall. He's sorry for it, I know, but so... You're angry! Yes, I guess I am. I had another man to do that to me. My father! She had a call me I wanted to be a dancer, and he knew I was pining my hopes on it. I can't say he ever encouraged me, but he let me go on talking, less, taking lessons and wishing. When I needed him to stand up and help me try for that dream, cut the threads. Who gave him for it... Or try to, but things were never the same. Then I got pregnant, Mary Jack. Guess you could say that cut, say that cut his threads, and he'd never forgiven me. Have you tried to resolve things there? No, I haven't. He gave me a choice too, just like Ethan did. What they seem to think of as a choice: do this their way, accept it, or do without them. So I'll do with, I'll do without. I understand that, but well, me buff boo, your pride. What does it do to your heart? When people break your heart, pride's all you've got left. And pride in her thought could turn cold and bitter without her. Let me talk to Ethan. I'll talk to him as soon as I can work out what needs to be said. She'll be the one. If I feel better, she realized. It helps to say it all out loud. And there's no one else I could say it to. 
I care about both of you. I know. We'll be all right. Okay, Bando's hand squeezes with force. Yep, yeah, me stop feeling weepy. I hate feeling weepy. Now, I'm going to work off some of this mad I didn't realize was in there. She managed to smile. You're going to have a damn clean house when I'm done. A clean, like a maniac, when I'm working off a mat. Don't work at all. I had a thought as Grace went inside. Save some of it for that idiot Ethan. Took two and a half hours for Grace to scrub, rinse, dusk, and polish her way through the second floor. She had a bad moment in Ethan's room where the scent of him, of the sea, clung to the air, and the small, careless pieces of his daily life were scattered about. But she drew herself in, calling on some same core of steel that had gotten her through a divorce and a painful family rift. Worked help, as it always had. Good, studious manual labor kept both her hands and her mind busy. Life went on. She knew it firsthand, and you got through it from... One day to the next. She had her child, she had her pride, and she still had dreams. So she came come to the point that she preferred to think of them as plans. She could live without Ethan, not as fully perhaps, not as joyfully certainly, but she could live and be protective and find contentment in the past she forged for herself and her daughter. She was finished with tears and self-pity. She started on the main floor with the same single-minded fever, furniture, was polished until clean, glass was scrubbed until sparkled. She hung out wash, swept porches, and battled dirt as if it were an enemy threatening to take over the earth. By the time she got to the kitchen, her back ached, but it was small and satisfying pain. Her skin wore a light coat of sweat. Her hands were pruny from wash water. She felt as accomplished as a corporate president after a major business coup. She checked the clock, measured time. She wanted to be finished and gone before Ethan came in from work. Despite the purging wrought by labor, there was a small shimmering ember of anger still burning in her heart. She knew herself well enough to understand that it would take very little to fan it to full flame. If she fought with him, if she even mo portion of the things that had careened through her head over the last few days, they would never be able to be civil again, much less friends. She wouldn't force the quince to take sides, and she wouldn't risk putting her precious and vital friendship with set at risk because two adults in his life couldn't mind their tempers. I won't lose my job over it either. She muttered as she went to work on the counter. Just because he can't see what he's throwing out of his life. She hissed out of breath, scooped her fingers through her hair, which the heat and her extrition had dampered at the temples, claimed herself by giving the drip pans on the ancient ring a good scorching, scouring. The phone rang. She snatched it up without thinking. Hello? Anna Quinn. Grace glanced out the window, so Anna put her in happily among the back garden. No, ow. I got something to say to you, bitch. Grace, stop! Two steps from the screen door. What? This is Glory DeLotner. Who the hell do you think you are threatening me? I'm not! I got rights, do you hear me? I got fucking rights. The old man made a deal with me, and if you and your bastard husband and his bastard brothers don't live up to it, you're the ones who will be sorry. The boys wasn't just hard and harsh. Grace realized it was manic. The words shooting out so fast that one ran into the back of the other. This was Seth's mother, she thought, as more abusive abuse rang in her ear. The woman who hurt him, who frightened him, taken money for him, sold him. She wasn't aware that she had twisted the phone cord around her head. That it was so tightly wrapped and bit into the flesh. Struggling her calm, she took a deep breath. Mrs. DeLautner, you're making a mistake. You're the one who made the goddamn mistake sending me that fucking letter instead of the money you owe me. You fucking owe me. You think I'm scared because you're some asshole social worker? I don't give a shit if you're the goddamn queen of goddamn England. The old man's dead. If you want things to stay like they are, you're going to deal with me. You think you can hold me off with words on paper? You're not going to stop me if I decide to come back and take that boy. You're wrong. Great her I'll say, but her voice sounded far away, echoing in her head. He's my flesh and blood, and I got a right to take what's mine. Try it! Rage to her through her like a sword. You'll never put your hands on him again. I can do what I like with what's mine. He's not yours. You sold him. Now he's ours, and you're never gonna get near him again. He'll do what the hell I tell him to. He knows he'll pay for it otherwise. You make one move toward him, I'll take you apart myself. Nothing you've done to him, however monstrous, is close to what I'll do to you. When I'm finished, they barely have enough left to scrap up and toss it in a cell. That's just where you'll go for child abuse, neglect, assault, prostitution, whatever else they call a mother who sells her child to men for sex. What kind of lies is that brat been telling you? I never laid a finger on him. Shut up! You shut the hell up! She lost track. Mix Seth's mother and Ethan's into one man. Woman, one monster. I know what you did to him, and there isn't a cage dark enough to lock you in to suit me. But I'll find one, and I'll shove you in it myself. And if you come near him again, 
I just want money. There was a little in the voice now. Both Sly and Little Scary. Just some money to help me, too. You've got plenty. I don't have anything for you but contempt. You stay away from here and you stay away from that child or I'll be the one who pays. You better think again. You just better think again. There was a muffled sound and the click of ice against Claire. You're no better than me. I'm not afraid of you. You should be afraid. You should be terrified. Um. I'm not finished with this. I'm not done. Click on the disc. Maybe not. I said it was a soft, dangerous voice, but neither am I. Glory to Latner. In a moment, she stood just on the other side of the screen where she'd been for the last two minutes. I don't think she's human. If she'd been here, if she'd been in this room, I'd have my hands around her neck. I'd have choked her like an animal. She began to shake now. Fury and reaction crashing against each side of her. I'd have killed her or tried. I know how it feels. It's hard to think about someone like her as a person and not a thing. Anna pushed the door open. Rise and grace. She would never have expected to see that white outrage. It's such a mild tip for a woman. <clears throat> I see it all too often in my work, but I never get used to it. She was foul. Grace <laughs> She thought it was you when I answered the phone. I tried to tell her at first, but she wouldn't listen. She just shouted and threatened and swore. I couldn't let her get away with it. Couldn't stand it. I'm sorry. It's all right. From the end of the conversation, I could hear. I'd say you handled it. You want to sit down? No, I can't. I can't sit. She shut her eyes and still only saw the blind and red, <laughs> red haze. Anna? She said she'd come back and get Seth if you didn't give her money. That's not going to happen. Anna moved to the refrigerator and pulled out a bottle of wine. I'm going to pour you a glass of this. You're going to drink it slowly while I get my notebook. Then I want you to try to tell me what she said as close as possible to exactly what she said. Can you do that? I can. I can remember. Good. Anna glanced at the car. We're going to want to document everything. If she does come back, we're going to be ready. Anna? Grace stared down on the wine. And her you can't be hurt anymore. You shouldn't have to be afraid anymore. I know it. We'll make sure he's not. Only be a minute. And it took her through the conversation twice as she went through. The second time, Grace found herself unable to sit. She broke asleep in her glass of wine half full and got a broom. The way she said... The way she said things was ever been as vile as what she said. So then she begins, she must use that same tone on Seth. I don't know how anyone can speak to a child that way. Then she shook her head. But if she doesn't think of him as a child, he's a thing to her. If you were called on to testify, you'd be able to swear under oath that she'd have made money. More than once, Grace Green. We'll come to that, Anna. We have to take Seth in the court. I don't know. If it heads in that direction, we should be able to add extortion to the list of charges we've reeled up off. You must have scared her, she had her with a small size. Of He'd have scared me. Things just come flying out of my mouth when I get worked up. I know what you mean. Things are, there are things I'd like to say to her, but I'm, but in my position, I can't, or I shouldn't. She said with a long time, I'll type this up for Seth's file, then I suppose I'll have to compose another letter to her. Why? Grace's fingers tighten on the handle of the room. Why do you have to have any contact with her? Kim and his brothers need to know, Grace. They need to know exactly what Gloria DeLautner and Seth were to Ray. It's not what some people are saying. It's not what some people are saying. Grace's eyes flashed. She shaked the dustpan out of the broom closet. She couldn't seem to sweep away the shimmering angers. Professor Quinn wouldn't have cheated on his wife. He was devoted to her. They need to have all the facts, and so does that. Seth, I'll give you a fact. Professor Quinn had taste. He wouldn't have looked twice at a woman like Gloria DeLotner unless it was with pity or disgust. Cam certainly feels the same way. But another thing people say is that when they look at Seth, they see Ray Quinn's eyes. Well, there's another explanation for it. That's all. Her own eyes were hot as she showed shoved the broom and dustbin away. He hanged out a bucket and mop. Perhaps, but it may have to be faced and dealt with that the Quins hit a rocky patch in their marriage, as people often do. Extramarital affairs are distressfully common. I don't give a damn about all the statistics you hear on television or read in magazines about how three or out of five men or whatever it is cheat on their wives. Grace dumped cleanser in the bucket, dropped it in the sink, turned the water on full blast. The Quins loved each other. They liked each other. And they had admiration for each other. You couldn't be around them and not see it. They were tied, only tighter together because of their sons. When you saw the five of them together, you were seeing family. Just the way the five of you were family touched in a smile. Well, we're working on it. You just haven't had as many years as the Quince did. Trace hauled the bucket out. They were a unit. <laughs> Units Anna thought often broke. If something had happened between Ray and Gloria, would Stella have forgiven him? 
Yeah, he starts to mop in the book. He gave in our cool decision. Would you forgive Cam? I don't know. Innocent arm. It would be hard because I'd had killed him, but I might eventually put flowers on his grave. Exactly. Satisfactory. That kind of betrayal doesn't swallow down easily, and it follows that if the Quins had that kind of teaching between them, their sons don't it. Children aren't fools, no matter how many adults might think so. No, they're not. And said, whatever the truth is, they need to find it. I'm going to type up my notes. He said, will you take a look at them? See if there's anything you want to add or change before they go into the bowel. All right. I've still got some wash to hang out. Then I'll be. They heard at the same time the wildly howling barks of dogs. Grace's reaction was pure to stress. She lost track of the time and he's was home. Going on instinct and a slipped her notebook in the kitchen room. I want to talk to Cam about this before we tell Seth about the phone call. Yes, that's best time. You can go out the back, Grace. <laughs> said nobody can blame you for not wanting another emotional hit today. I have washed to hang out. You've done more than enough for one afternoon, Grace. I finished what I start. She turned in the laundry room and the lid of the washer changed as she tossed it, which is more than I could say. Of some people. <laughs> and I looked around. Ethan wasn't for surprise. She decided it wasn't in handy that she was around to see him get it. End of chapter 18.